Okay, so hi guys, that's Raif here, and today I'll be going through um, the last set lesson of my beginner Python course, which is miscellaneous basic, basic concepts and moving forward. So, um, okay, so basically what the, the point of this entire lesson is to just go through some stuff that we, we didn't go through in the previous lessons, because um, if you go ahead and search like Python tutorials online, right, there are quite a lot, and of course each one will be different, and sometimes they teach things that I did not cover, for example, um, you'll see examples later. Lah. For example, they, they teach um, they teach the backslash thing, right? escaping characters, when I didn't teach it. And the reason why I didn't, why I glossed over it is because I, I didn't think it was critical for understanding the basic concepts. So those are more of like small details that, that you can easily pick up later on. So I didn't want you to get too um, confuzzled with those small details from the beginning. I wanted to focus on the core concepts. So now this lesson will be a patch up, right? Of all the previous lessons where we basically go over those tiny details. And of course I can't go over every detail, but I'll try to at least go over some common ones. So yeah, then after that, I'll talk about what, what you can learn moving forward. So, um, so first of all, variable types, some tutorials go through this you have different variable types, right? To find the type of variable, you can type, use the type function. So just put type and pass in the variable you want, and you can get the following things. So you see this thing called class over here. Uh, this is actually going to be taught in intermediate Python. So under a topic called object-oriented programming, and basically this class thing is a, it's kind of indicative of a type of um, data structure. So in, in intermediate, um, Python course, I'll be teaching how you can define your own class, right? And then you create instances of the class, which are called objects. So yeah, that's that. Um, then uh, one more thing is formatted strings. So for example, if I, um, I, the way I taught you to print variables is separated with commas like that, right? But if you, if you want um, to, you can also do it this way, which is put F, right? And then and then uh, where you want to insert the variable, just put these curly brackets and you see that it works as well. So this is called formatted strings. You need to put an F in front to indicate that it's a formatted string. And yeah, that's something that I didn't mention previously, but now you know. So um, next thing is the print function. At the end, if you don't want to go to the next line, right? As you know, if you print something and then you, you have another print statement after that, then it's going to then it's going to um, go to the next line automatically, like some text and then after that it's more text in the next line. But if you don't want it to go to the next line by default, then you can set the parameter n equals to blank string. And then you can see that there's no new line between more text and even more text. And uh, by default, the n is equals to this backslash n, which indicates a new line character. So this is the default, which seen here, this is from the Python this is from the Python documentation. This is the default value. Okay, so next thing, escaping characters. What if rather print quotes inside strings? Um, then if, if then you see that uh, if you use apostrophe or the double quotes, right? Then it will interfere with the definition of the string. So of course that isn't good because now Python will think meow is a variable name when it's actually not, when it's actually supposed to be text, which is in quotes. So um, if that doesn't work, then we can put a backslash right before the quote. So basically the backslash is telling Python, the next thing that comes after this backslash, right? Immediately after this backslash, the next character is going to be taken like, it is, it's, a, it's, it's taken literally, it's, I mean, it's not um, part of the, I want it as a character. So for example, you put backslash apostrophe, then it'll be taken as apostrophe as a string, as a character. Same thing goes for quotes. And now you may be wondering what if I want to print backslash, right? Because if I put just a single backslash, is Python is going to think that I'm trying to escape to the next correct the next character. But if I want to print backslash, I can actually backslash backslash. So this means this tells Python that the next backslash that's coming on is actually a backslash that I literally want to see in the screen instead of being an escaping thing. Okay, so now multi-line strings. What if I want to print a poem? then I can use triple quotes, right? And then when I enter a new line, it's going to be taken as part of the string. So this way I can print multiple line strings and it can also use them as multiple multi-line comments. 
which means that you know you have a comment right we're using a hashtag you can write multiple a comment that spans multiple lines you can use quotes so this is code that is not going to be executed because it is part of a string and the string is not used in the program in any way so you can use them as comments so last um, next thing is a list if you have a list what can you do with list i went through things like append deletion and indexing uh, assigning values but you can actually call sum to sum up the values in the list right of course these items have to be summable you can't sum up strings maybe you can i don't know but um uh, you can also besides summing up items right you can also you can also extend the list by another list so this kind of like appending right remember the append function but by extending you basically extend the list by each item so you see that one two three extend by four five six you get one two three four five six then you can also append different data types right different variable types to the list right so your list can store both numbers and um, strings and floats and booleans and so on so that's the thing for lists which i didn't really talk about um, you can also insert things into the middle of a list right using the insert function so you insert it at the index right so this is plugged from google and go ahead and search list insert and you see this is one of the pop-ups so at the i've index a insert element so yeah so you insert hello at index one then it's going to do this Okay, then not if I want to, but if instead of assessing just one item in the list, I want to assess a, a, a part of the list, right? It's called list slicing, right? You can search out the syntax online, but a simple example would be if you want to put, you, know, you want to get from index two to three, then you put two colon four. Remember that it's exclusive of the n one. So yeah, similar to how for loops work. So um, yeah, there's list slicing for you. Um, you can also you can also strings are also list right strings are also list so you can also print the length and you can also it you can also do slicing just with strings just like how you do them with list and you can also look through them like how you look through an array uh, how you look through a list so for high and s print the character so basically strings are lists of characters okay so but if I want to divide and then I want to floor it, right? Then basically you can use a double slash. So if you instead of having five divided by two, you have five slash slash two, which is a flooring divide. Same thing goes for 11 slash four, slash slash four, then you have two because 11 divided by four is like um, 2.75, right? And then you, you, you floor it, so you get two. Okay, uh, next thing is importing. So I'll demonstrate this on the console over here. So let's take a look. So in here we have two files, right? So what if I what if I want to write a Python code that spans two files? So let me just create a console. So for example, inside a main.py, right? This is my main.py folder. Let's say I create another file and I call it tch.py, right? Then inside tch.py, let's say I define some interesting function. Let's just say I have a function called square, which takes in a parameter x and returns x times x. Okay, fairly simple. I save it, then I go over here and let's say I want to call the I want to call the square function from the tch.py. How do I do that? I need to import, right? I import the file name. So import tch, right? So I don't need to put the part dot .py behind. So let's import tch. Then after that, I can go and call tch.square and call the function. Just, so it's basically like the same thing as calling a function, just that before that, I need to put tch. Dot, which basically tells Python that, hey, this squaring function comes from the file, comes from the module actually. It's called a module, uh, it's called TCH. So this is, this is importing a module. It's known as importing a module. Okay, so if we go ahead and run this, you can see that I see 25. So this is a um, illustration of the code, right? Same thing, yeah. Then what if I want to, what if I want to import multiple, multiple, um, let me see, yeah. Okay, what if I want to import? Um, okay, I can also do. I can also do if I don't want to write the tch dot. Right, imagine that I need to call the square function many times, and I just want to call it with square. So I can also do from tch import square. So this is importing a specific function only. So this is importing specific function from module. 
And then after that, I don't need the TCH dot anymore. I can just call square and you see that it works. Yeah, so that's important. Then what if, let's say, CTCH um, had multiple functions. So let's say there's cube function as well. Right, so let's say there's cube function. Then I here, if I try to call cube, right, then it's going to say cube is not found. So I need to import cube as well. So I put a comma and I put there. When I run, I see cube. But then, um, but then this this might not. Uh, but but then let's say I have many many functions that I wrote in tch.py now. You import all of them. So then I just replace all of this with a star, right? So that it imports all the functions from the tch.py. And from here, I can then call both the square and the cube function because I've imported both of them. So that is importing functions from a module. Okay, so lastly, uh, so we now know about importing. So you can see that importing is quite useful because imagine somebody writes a very useful code, right? He wrote some function that was, is, is, it requires some big brain logic, right? Then how do you, if you don't want to copy his code over, like how do you just use this code without, without needing, yeah, how do you just use this code? that somebody else put in effort to write. You can just import his module and, and use it in your code. So that's how you share code with others, right? You write a, you write a Python file like this, right? And then you, you, you send it to your friend. And then your friend, instead of copying the code into his code, he can just open this in a same directory. And then after that, he just imports your code. And he can run your functions just like how, as you, exactly as you've written them. So that's how you import modules. This is known as modules. So then how do you how do you generate random numbers? You import a module known as random. So this is a built-in module in Python. All right. I didn't we did not write my random by ourselves, but it's built in. So if I go ahead and in here I I import random. So then this is a random, I imported random mod the random module. So this module has a bunch of functions, for example. It's a function called random dot in, which generates an integer between uh, these two bounds that you put. So if I go and print it, right, and I see that currently it's generated one. If I run it again, it'll probably generate a different. Yeah, I see eight. Each time I run, it'll generate a different number. So I can put in for loop and I can generate a bunch of random numbers. So using this, you can actually build a number guess again, right? So for example, it generates a random number between one and one hundred. Then the guess, the the you the the player right can have let's say the player can have um let's say ten tries to to try to guess a number. So yeah, that's so. What's maybe one thing you can ask yourself is what is the optimal way for the guesser to guess, and that will lead you to something called binary search. So anyway, this um I think this lesson is going to be pretty fast. So we've reached kind of the end. Uh, so this is, I moving forward, right? There's many things you can do from here. Python, beginner Python is just, uh, it's like the, it's like learning, kind of like learning your alphabets, you know, you can go from there, you can learn many other things. Beginner foundation is a, beginner Python is really a foundation for many other great things that you can pursue. So for instance, if you want to learn object-oriented programming, right? I think I might be doing a course on that. Um, yeah, depending on popularity also, because to be honest, I think most of by now most of you guys have lost interest already, at least most of the other people. So um, if you like it, then please go ping me and I will maybe put in effort to build uh to do a object oriented programming course. After that, uh, if you know object oriented programming, you can go on to start making websites or games or even many more. Like you does not have to stop here once you. You learn more frameworks and you learn more, you can learn 3D graphics, right? OpenGL, many interesting things. You can also start doing some data analytics. So we know how to work with files, right? We can also interact with comma separated with CSV files, which is kind of like your Excel files. So basically Python can kind of interact with your Excel files to, to do some simple programming. Of course, Excel has its own programming language, which, which follows the same logic as Python. Right, because almost all programming languages have the same logic, but you can basically start to do some basic data analytics, maybe do some statistics or some stuff like that. And that also leads naturally to artificial intelligence. You can 
um, you can build neural networks in Python. There's many cool libraries, right? Science Kit Learn, um, yeah, NumPy, SciencePy, so on. And from there, you can go on to build like convolutional neural networks and many, many, many interesting things. Um, you can also, for, for Python, you can also learn other languages such as C++, right? So you see that there, Python is actually, it's, it, 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 the, the logic is going to be the same. So if you know for loops in Python, right, it's pretty much, you can pretty much get for loops in C++ instantly, as along with Java, for loops in Java and so on. So the concepts are pretty much identical. It's just the syntax is a little bit different. So don't worry when you hear people say like, oh, this guy has learned um, 18 programming languages. Honestly, right, if you spend a few a few months, you can probably, or a few weeks, you can probably learn 18 languages as well. You because as long as you get one, right, the rest are very easy to pick up. So yeah, you, you pick up languages as you need them. Yeah, or, or you can just learn them for fun also can. Um, yeah, and then from here, you can digress to many more things, right? If you know different languages, you can build uh, many more interesting things. For example, if you know Swift, you can build iOS apps. If you know Java, you can build Android apps, right? If you know JavaScript, right, which is a different language from Java, by the way, then if you know JavaScript, you can build um, websites, you can build, you can build web servers, right? Web programming, you can also build phone apps actually using like things like React Native frameworks. Then uh, if you learn C++, you can also pursue competitive programming, which is when you start writing programs that are more complicated in nature. For example, um, how do you sort a list of values by yourself in the most efficient way? Then you learn things that you learn ways to analyze the speed of the programs using things like uh, it's called time complexity, right? And then there's more, you can also branch out, we can also diverge, you can also branch out to more of the theoretical computer science side where like you have questions like how fast it, it, it is sometimes programs, some problems we can solve only in a certain, we can solve very quickly and some problems we cannot solve very quickly, right? So that's your P versus NP, polynomial versus non-polynomial time, basically. Then the questions are like, is, is the question is basically asking, um, is it that we cannot solve these, these slow problems because we are not smart enough to come up with the solutions? Or is it because they are fundamentally different, like they, they cannot, they really cannot be solved that quickly. So that's your P versus NP question, right? So comparative programming is something that I am, all this bolded stuff is things that I am thinking of pursuing. Uh, I mean, thinking of making lessons for, I myself used to do comparative programming a little bit, right? Um, yeah, so point is, now that you've known this, if you get the logic of programming, you can go and then pursue great things. So you don't really, honestly speaking, you don't really need a CS degree to learn to, to do coding. If you have understood the lesson so far, I will really encourage you, if you enjoy it, to, to just, just explore. Yeah, and feel free to message me if you need any help or need any directions or you want me to create lessons for any particular thing. So if not, um, I think due to fading interest in my, due to fading interest in my uh, beginner course, I'm going to, I'm going to, now um, this will be the last lesson for this course. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys have enjoyed it. For, I hope you guys have learned uh, the basics of Python from this course. And um, yeah, I hope to see you guys uh, pick up by pick up um, pick up coding and explore more by yourself. So if not, have a nice day. Bye bye.